Hey, it's Mike here, and today, joints. No, not those types of joints, although I did do a whole video on that. Now we're talking about your joints, like your knees and your elbows and your wrists. In particular, I wanna examine the notion that our joints are supposed to fail and degrade naturally at the rate that we see and to the degree that we see in the Western world, in our experience. And to answer a question I've gotten a lot from you guys, we're gonna investigate whether or not it's possible to reverse joint degeneration naturally. Okay, let's go. I seem to know a few people that are not super old, yet they have joint issues that you would expect to see at an older age. And still they are resigned to the notion that this is how their body should be degrading, that their moderate injury should have never healed and joints are just flawed. Now, I wanna make it clear that I'm not here to say that every single joint injury ever that anybody's had under the age of 70 should have healed if they were just healthier. I'm just saying that something is going on here that is not natural aging. And so I wanna talk about some studies that point to that. In other words, our collective joint situation doesn't need to be as bad as it currently is. And on this topic, there's probably no better place to start than the lower back. And I've talked about this a lot of times, so I'll just do a quick nutshell version. The lower back is unique in that it is probably the most vulnerable part of your body to joint degeneration. It is a large chunk of cartilage. It's a large piece of avascular tissue. And that means that your blood supply doesn't go directly into it. It sort of goes up to it. And then nutrients have to just sort of seep into it. And this makes sense from a logical perspective that you don't want to have a bunch of pressure on tubes because they'll get crushed. And so you can't really have blood supply there. And this is where the biggest issue comes in and that is artery clogging in terms of lower back pain and spinal disc degeneration. This study found that 80% of people that they looked at who had chronic lower back pain had severely clogged spinal arteries. And this is ridiculously common. From this study, 70% of people over the age of 21 had disc degeneration. Now you wouldn't like to think that the human body just fails at this frequency, but the nail in the coffin that we have a sick population that this is not normal is this award-winning study that found spinal disc degeneration in preteens and teens in people 11 to 16 years old. This is not normal. This is clearly more than just natural aging. It's lifestyle, particularly what we put in our mouth. And I'll talk more about that in a second, but I wanna look to another joint really quickly, one I haven't talked about, and that is the knee. The knee has a couple horseshoe shaped pads of cartilage. The breakdown of this cartilage is a leading cause of disability. And from this study, quote, both knee and ankle cartilages have general features that are typical of articular cartilage in that there are no blood vessels or nerve supply and nutrition is derived from synovial fluid, again, it just kind of creeps in there. And what we're talking about here is osteoarthritis, a wearing down of that cartilage until it's bone on bone, ouch. And back to that study, it is quote, associated with occupations in which there is a high repetitive stress on the joint. And that's the common view that it's just wear and tear and there's nothing you can do about it. But to this study, it appears that rates of knee osteoarthritis have doubled over the last hundred years. And that's adjusting for a ton of variables like getting fatter and living longer. So based off our current experience in the current state of joint aging, it's no wonder that our understanding of joint aging is totally wrong. And this is certainly the result of what we put in our mouth. In particular, a ton of atherogenic animal fat and it's to the point where our children are starting to get fatty streaks in their aorta at the age of three. And if somebody just randomly dies in a car accident and donates their heart, there's a 50% chance that it has coronary atherosclerotic lesions on it. And in terms of knees, again, we see a strong graded relationship between clogging of arteries and the knee degeneration. From this study, quote, we showed a correlation between atherosclerosis and ultrasonographic knee osteoarthritis grade. We also see the same connection in wrists from this study, systematic hand osteoarthritis and and a worse clinical course for that are associated with coronary heart disease. And these results strengthen the systematic component of hand osteoarthritis and the association between arthritis pain and cardiac events. Also quickly want to mention inflammatory joint disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis and the connection they have from this study. Quote, inflammatory joint disorders are associated with increased cardiovascular disease related morbidity and mortality. There's another level to rheumatoid arthritis though. And I think this definition from arthritis.org is pretty acceptable. Quote, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease in which the body's immune system, which normally protects its health by attacking foreign substances like bacteria and viruses, mistakenly attacks the joints. 
While some have pointed to that autoimmune response being triggered by animal proteins themselves, we do also have new research suggesting that it could be a response to bacteria present in milk and beef. And there are many other possible sources of that inflammation. Regardless of the source, this joint inflammation has a double negative effect with regard to artery health. From this study, the inflammation from arthritis appears to accelerate the clogging of arteries. The clogging of arteries means a lower blood supply to joints, so this is a vicious cycle. And this is where we get to the topic of diet. Firstly, vegan diets have been shown to lower inflammation markers by 30%. Getting even more particular, we do have this study on rheumatoid arthritis in a vegan diet, a McDougal diet in particular, because it was done by McDougal. It's a relatively small study with 20 something people, and it was only done over four weeks, but the results were pretty amazing. We're talking about less joint pain and a ton of other improvements in just a month. Now I wanna take a couple steps back to joint degeneration again and ask that super common question that I get, and that is, can joint degeneration heal. Before I put the cartilage before the horse, I need to back up a step again and mention that hundreds of times I've talked about Dr. Esselstyn's whole food vegan diet trial showing a rapid reversal of artery clogging and increase in blood flow. And this leads people to wonder, if I clear my arteries out, can I reverse my disc degeneration? Or is it too late for me? Is my life over? I think a promising subject on this topic is microfracture. It's where bone doctors essentially drill small holes on your knee bones in hopes of stimulating blood flow and regrowing cartilage. I've seen a video of them doing this. Don't watch it. I already watched it for you. From the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, quote, new blood supply can reach the joint surface, bringing with it new cells that will form the new cartilage. Now I don't wanna be absolutist here. We don't have the research on this yet, but this seems very promising that if you can get the blood back in there, then you can regrow the cartilage that's what they're saying, and that's a very credible source. So if I had millions of dollars, I would take a bunch of people with spinal disc degeneration, put them on a whole food vegan diet, do before and after shots of their disc degeneration, and see, till I get the millions of dollars, we'll never know. Now I cannot finish this video without addressing bone broth because I know there's gonna be somebody watching this that goes, oh, you just drink enough bone broth and then your joints will regenerate and everything will be great. If you watch my recent live stream, I talked about this a little bit, and that is the myths around cartilage and bone broth and peptides. In my bone broth video in the past, I mentioned that we have this thing called digestion that breaks cartilage down into smaller pieces. But recently I've been hearing a lot about peptides, that there are still these long enough chains of amino acids that eating bone broth is great for you and will definitely repair all of your cartilage. So peptides are little chains, little sequences of amino acids. And from this Colorado State page, quote, there is virtually no absorption of peptides longer than four amino acids. In contrast, human collagen looks like this. There are about 600 amino acids threaded together into a sequence known as human cartilage. Wah, wah. The final kicker is that those particular bone broth peptides, collagen peptides that are sold as supplements, like hydroxyproline, for example, are present in plants, like alfalfa. Not that eating 1% of the total amino acids that you need to make a piece of collagen will even make a difference anyway, just wanted to mention it. In summary, artery clogging plays a massive role in the accelerated unnatural rate of joint degeneration that we see in our society. And this is really unfortunate. It's affecting children. And this issue could massively be minimized by a change in diet, particularly to a whole food vegan diet, which has been clinically shown to unclog arteries. And on that note, we have some hope that unclogging arteries could regenerate this cartilage, but we have yet to fully prove it. Either way, you have nothing to lose. You have a way better chance of having healthier joints if you have healthier arteries. All right, I just thought I'd present another perspective on joint aging. I hope that it wasn't all too repetitive. And that's it for today. Feel free to do all those things I always say at the end of a video, which is like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.